Okay, so we're continuing with 5-3. Um, we were looking at those conditional probabilities. Um, so I have one more formula that we're not really going to use, um, but we're going to take the ideas from the formula. So don't really use this formula. I see it overused and students get confused. Um, but the probability of A and B, right? The probability that both things happen. Ands are both, right? Can be found doing the probability of A times the probability of B given that A already happened. So what this is telling us is that we can um, find the and case by multiplying probabilities. Um, basically P of A times P of B, um, but considering that A has already happened. So I think the exam this sounds really confusing, but let me show you in this example. It will make way more sense. So we're going to look at students in a stats class, and we're looking at their um, class level, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Um, so if we want to do the probability of a junior and then a senior, we can use this concept. Right, and senior. So this is telling me that I'm going to randomly select a student, and the first student is a junior. So what's the probability of a junior? I'll worry about the rest later. So the probability of a junior would be 12, and then I don't think I found the total. So we just add those up, and the total is 40. I just added up all the frequencies. So the probability of getting a junior is 12 out of 40. That's my P of A. And so I can basically multiply by the probability of a senior for the second person, given that this junior has already happened. So what this is saying is we've already selected a student. So there's no longer 40 students. How many students are left? 39, right? Because we've taken one junior out of the room. That's what we're saying when we say randomly select without replacement. We're going to take a junior out, so now we've changed the total to 39. So this is how I'm using, I'm not really using the formula, I'm using the idea of the formula. And then how many seniors are there? Oops. There's seven. And then we can just go ahead and multiply those. So I would do 12 over 40 times 7 over 39, and I get 0 0.0538. So let's try this again. So do not overuse this formula, but just the concept of it. So we want both our sophomores, which just means a sophomore and a sophomore. Right, both means and. So the probability of the first sophomore will be 15 out of 40. And then here's where it gets tricky. Now, again, there's only 39 students. How many sophomores are there? There's also one less sophomore, so there's only 14 left. One less student, one less sophomore. So that's what the given is, is we're considering that that first person has been taken out of the room. And so just go ahead and multiply those again. So 15 over 40 times 14 over 39. And I got 0.1346. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. I know the formula itself is confusing, which is why I don't use the formula. Um, we just use it for when we're doing these like events back to back. So now let's do five juniors. So basically junior, 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 junior. So there'll be five things. So the probability of the first junior would be 12 out of 40. How about my second junior? One less student, one less junior. So 11 out of 39. And we keep going. Now we have 38 students. How many juniors? 10. Okay, keep going, right? Nine out of 37, right? One less junior, one less uh, student. And then one more. So now again, we have one less, so there's only eight juniors left and there's only 36 students left. And go ahead and multiply them. So do 12 over 40. When I type this on the calculator, I'm typing, um, I'm typing it 12 over 40 times 11 over 39 times 10 over 38. This is how the calculator is going to read it correctly. If you do the top and then the bottom, the calculator will read it incorrectly. So go in order.
And I got like a really small number because we need a lot of things to happen. I got 0012. All right, and our final example in this video, um, let's go back to just two students. Now we want a freshman and a sophomore. So this is different than my first example. Notice in the first one I said we get a junior, then a senior, right? First is a junior, then a senior. A freshman and a sophomore could be freshman, then sophomore, but it could also be the opposite order. Or sophomore, then freshman. So we're going to find two probabilities and then add them up, because ors we add. So what's the probability of a freshman? So a freshman will be, I'm going to move this down, 6 out of 40, because there's 6 freshmen. 40 students. And then my sophomore, we only have 39 students, and how many sophomores do we have? We have all 15, because we took out a freshman not a sophomore. So six out of 40 times 15 out of 39, and I get 0577. And then for ors, we may not remember, but we can add ors. So what's the opposite? So now we're gonna do a sophomore first. So there's 15 out of all 40. And then freshmen, there's still six because we haven't touched the freshmen, but there's only 39 students because we took one student out. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply and we actually get the exact same number. And we'll go ahead and add those up. And I get 0.1154. So just pay attention if order matters. So in this case, order didn't matter, so we had to consider both orders. Um, versus like the other examples, um, there was only one order where those things could happen. All right, I'll see you back for the next video.